A few weeks ago, I reviewed the Beta FPV Express LRS Nano module. And at the time, I did say that this module is the best way to get into the Express LRS world. Now, this module has a lot going for itself, including being very affordable, it's very tiny, and it's very versatile, fitting a lot of radios just like this jumper t -Lite right here. But what if you're the pilot that wants a little bit more power, or maybe you're like me and you need a new module for your full-size radio? Well, Beta FPV has gone back to the drawing board to engineer a new Micro Express LRS module capable of one watt. Yes, one watt. So today we'll be taking a look at this module, and maybe now we can take our drones to the moon. So here's the box right here, pretty straightforward, pretty typical of Beta FPV white with some branding on here, nothing else. On the side, I have a label here that says ELRS Micro RF Module 2.4 gigahertz, one watt version. So that's pretty crazy considering the uh, effectiveness of uh, Express LRS, how efficient it is and how far you can get on just lower power output. So one watt is just, wow, ridiculous. Okay, so let's open this up. No unboxing knife required. First thing I see here is just a packet here with some antennas, looks like a Moxon antenna here. So it's a directional antenna, pretty cool. We said that you have a harness in here and that's used for connecting to older style radios. You have a USB-A to a USB-C cable. All right, and here's your module. And the first thing that's apparent is that this thing is not white. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. That's a little bit different from Beta FPV. At the bottom here, you have a QR code, which is cool to go to the website for manuals and such. And then here's your official manual that's shipped with this. So let's take a look at this module here. Here's your module. It weighs pretty a decent amount. And then you have an antenna in here, which is pretty cool. So it does come with a secondary antenna. And I do like that having two antenna choices. Obviously this one here is less effective, but it's an omnidirectional. This is the one I usually typically use with my drones just because it's compact. It fits pretty well with my radio. If I do want to go long range, then I can use my directional antenna here. And this antenna here is pretty small as well. Very, very compact, but it is directional and the antenna of choice if you do want to fly long range. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this module here. The first thing that's apparent, as I said before, is just the fact that it's not white. It's uh, a black color. And that's pretty interesting and surprising just because Beta FAB has a, a history of making a lot of white products. And these products look really premium, just like this radio right here. It gives it a nice premium feel, almost like some kind of uh, Apple device. So the white is pretty cool, but the biggest issue with white devices is that it kind of doesn't mesh or go well with existing products on the FPV market. Usually you have gray or dark colors on the FPV market. If you add this thing on here and then you have a big clash of colors. So you can tell based upon this, then this is going to mesh pretty well with this. And it's going to look like it was made for these FPV products existent on the market. Besides that, the material on here looks like some kind of a plastic or ABS or injected molded plastic. Now, Beta FAB does offer an optional case with this, and it's a 3D type of case, and that's a special edition. So you have the choice of this one or the other 3D printed one, which is also black as well. Now, the cool thing here is that this one here does have an OLED screen, and that's pretty cool because you can see the parameters or you can configure this module with this screen. And that's pretty cool, very reminiscent of the earlier Crossfire modules on the market. Another thing to note about this screen is that in case you do have an older style radio or a radio without JR Bay, then you can navigate the Express LRS module with this screen and this joystick because some of those radios don't even have a Lua script or a Lua to interface with the Express LRS module. So this screen here is pretty cool. All right, next thing that pops out of me is just gold or yellow connector. This is an XT30 connector, and this is the alternate way to power this device. Now, obviously this is a higher output device, and just in case you want some supplementary power or auxiliary power, then you can put an XT30 battery in here. Beta FPV does indicate that you do need to power this with a 2S battery, nothing higher than that. If you do go higher, then you will fry the module in here. So just remember a 2S battery. To the right here, you have a USB-C port, and that's pretty cool. That's for firmware updates. But they did make this opening here a little bit larger to accommodate aftermarket USB-C cables as well. Now, if you have a USB-C cable that doesn't fit, then that's why they supply this one here for you. On the top here, you have your connection for your antenna. It's a pretty standard SMA connector, and we'll just screw this antenna on here. So that's good to know. So before you power this up, 
make sure you have an antenna on here. These things are designed to transmit power. And if you don't have an antenna on here, then you will damage the module in the radio. On the back here, it's pretty simple. You have your label saying Beta FPV Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz, one watts. That's pretty cool. And then you have these dip switches on here, which is pretty new for this module. And the way you're gonna configure this is based upon the operation of this module. So we have three different modes, one for firmware updates of the module, one for normal operation, and then a third mode for updating the backpack feature of this module as well. Besides here, you have your port here for your JR bay, and that's how this is gonna communicate with your radio. At the bottom, you have the port here for said wire in case this doesn't work with your radio, your full-size radio, or if your radio doesn't have a JR bay, then you can connect it with this port right here. All right, so we talked about the stuff on the outside. Let's go on the inside here. Internally, we have an LED light in here, and that was used initially for just aesthetics, and you can change the colors on that. With the more updated firmware, that feature is now gone, and that light is used for status updates or with the power output of this module. Besides that, you have a fan in here, and that's pretty cool for keeping this module cool. This is a one watt module, so this thing puts out a lot of heat. And the fan is adjustable depending on your power output, and we'll talk about that in a few moments. Besides that, because this is an upgraded model as well with a lot of output and a lot of heat, there's also an included heat sink in here. And that's a big difference in keeping this thing cool, especially in warm climates. Now, based upon their testing, they said this thing can be used in all different type of climates. So if you're in a hot climate, say it's summertime, this should still work, this shouldn't be a problem. On the inside of this module, we also have a backpack module. Now you've heard me talk about the backpack feature numerous times today, and that's a feature where you can sync your drone, your goggles, and your module together. Now this is more of a convenience factor. You can go into your radio in the Lua scripts, and then you can change either the band and or channel in the radio, and then that will sync to both your goggles and your VTX as well as your module. So say for example, you wanna change the channel and or your band, you just change it in your radio, it will sync it to your goggles, change the channel and or band in your goggles, and do the same thing with your drone's VTX. All right, so let's just plug this in and see what it looks like. Pretty quiet. Here's your LED light, it's flashing, it's flashing green. And then you have your joystick here to navigate to this menu. All right, so press, and here we are. All right, so you see the Express LRS right here. It shows you the firmware on this one here. Now this is the original firmware that came from the factory, so it doesn't have a specific number on here. And then you can go to your packet rate, your telemetry ratio, your power output, and we can go higher up here and select the higher output. Oh, that's one watt, we don't need that. Pretty cool, RGB auto, we can't change it anymore. And then you can go to bind and update if you want to. Now this thing goes into Wi-Fi mode automatically and it can vary from module to module. Uh, I don't know what's set on this one, maybe 30 or 60 seconds on here. And as you can see, it says a Wi-Fi update mode. So it is broadcasting a network. And that's one way you can update this module. You can either update it via the Wi-Fi or via the USB. Now, as I said before, this, there's numerous ways to power this and interface with this module here. And one way was with the battery here, the XT30 plug. Another way is with your actual radio. Maybe that is the preferred way, especially if you don't have a battery. All right, so here's my radio here. This is my Jumper T18 Pro V2. I did a review on this recently. I'll leave the video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. I have my JR Bay in the back right here, and this should fit in here if I just remove this cover. And you just line these pins up, and it should fit in here pretty snug. And there it is. And that's a beautiful look, guys. This thing. It looks really nice. Like it was meant to be in there. The color is the right color. And the fit on finish on this is, <laughs> I hate to use that word, but it's surprisingly good. It's really awesome the way it fits in here. So let's power this on. Welcome to Open TX. And now it says Express LRS. And then this module here should be powered, which it is. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I've done multiple videos on how to set up your Express LRS module for your radio. So I'll leave those video linked above and below so you can take a look at it. Besides that, to get to the Lua script for your Express LRS, you go to your system and simple as scrolling and looking for Express LRS, selecting that, it's gonna load. And here's all your menus for your Express LRS module. Now, as you can see here, it's very similar to what we saw on the OLED screen on the module. 
you have your switch mode, which is pretty cool. And that lets you change the actual resolution for your switches. So that can be used for things like flaps or anything with high, small detents or small position changes opposed to an on or off switch. And then you have model match, which is a new feature they added to version 2.0. And that lets you match your module to each specific model or drone. Besides that, you go down here, you can go to TX power and then you can change your power. Obviously I have it at 100. You can turn dynamic power on or off. And that's very similar to Crossfire where the closer you are, the lower the power and the further you get, the higher the power will increase in your module to keep the connection available. Uh, your fan threshold, and that can change when the fan actually kicks on or comes on to cool the actual module. It's set to 250 milliwatts, which is pretty safe. The VTX administrator lets you just change your band channel just like the backpack feature. Wi-Fi connectivity, pretty cool. You can enable Wi-Fi on your module, enable Wi-Fi on your RX and your receiver if you want to, so you can start the binding process. Then you have enable backpack Wi-Fi, which enables the Wi-Fi module in here to communicate with the goggles and the drone. And then you also have enable VRX Wi-Fi, and that's the Wi-Fi and your goggles so that all these things can communicate to each other. So it's pretty cool that you can do that with this Lua script. Other things here, Bluetooth joysticks. So if you do want to, you can hit enter. And that lets you use this as a Bluetooth module to interface with your computer. So say you wanna fly Sims wirelessly, that's the way you will do that. We said that you have your bind, which is the old school way of binding to a receiver. And then we have the master or the firmware update version. In this case, it's just a random number because this came shipped from the factory with its own uh, firmware on here. So just because of this right here and we can't tell what version is on here, we are gonna go to the computer and update this module with the latest Express LRS versions. So we'll go there, update this module, come back here and connect to a drone and see if this module does in fact work. All right guys, so we're here at the computer. I have my module right here. I also have my USB-C cable connected to my computer. So we can connect this and flash this via the UART or the USB method. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is get to your Express LRS configurator. We have it right here. This is the latest version at the time of filming, 1.3.9. But these things change so much and it changes so quickly. The most recent one is 2.3.0, but we're gonna to go to 2.3.0 and that gives you the best features and the best performance for your module. So target here, choose your target. Obviously we have the beta FPV 2.4 and then the device, this is very crucial because the other earlier releases may not have your specific module. As you can see, we're doing the TX and we have three TX uh, modules here. In this case, we are using the 1000 milliwatt, which is the new version here. This is the one watt version. So we'll select the 1000 milliwatt and then we wanna flash this via UART, so that's pretty cool. And if this is your first time doing this, you have to set up all this stuff here, especially your binding phrase. I highly recommend that you put a custom binding phrase. Okay, so before I plug this in, I just wanna make sure the dip switches are set for updates. So make sure if you wanna update the firmware on this, you have switch one and two up and the rest all down. It's powered, I can see it powered. And let's just build and flash and see what happens. Everything looks correct, build and flash. Now, if this is the first time you're doing this, this might take a while, so this might take me a while. I have pretty fast internet, but still it has to get all the information and then accumulate it and then flash the actual module. While this is building here, as I said before, I've done numerous videos on how to flash your module, whether it be the TX module or the module in your drone, the RX module. I'll leave this video linked so you can take a look at it. So I won't go into great depth of how to do this. We're just gonna flash this and see if it binds to the RX on my drone as well. But everything here looks good so far. It looks very normal. Okay, so we're back at the table here and we have our module updated with the latest firmware, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at the differences in the menu. There should be some subtle differences in here. So let's plug this up. And as you can see the same Express LRS module, the logo, you can see a little bit of a difference in information here for right now. It shows you Express LRS and it shows you the version number, which is a, a really welcome site. So now you know the actual version of the firmware on here without even going into the menu. It also shows you your telemetry and what settings you have set in this module. So it shows you 500 Hertz, the ratio, 
the actual packet rate and then yep that's it telemetry now to get into the menu is the same way you just press and hold this five direction joystick and now you have an actual picture of what you're looking at so packet rate you can go to tx power telemetry ratio bind mode which is pretty cool and then update the firmware so so that looks all pretty good so you have all your actual like icons for each you know mode or menu in this module so it's really nice looking man they did a really good job on this now let's see how that looks in the radio Light mode angle. okay so that's kind of bright let's make this better for you to see we can go numerous ways here let's go to our system go to the express lrs and same information as before in the 2.0 version um, nothing really different here, but as you can see down here, now it says 2.3.0. So now it actually shows the firmware number on here, which is really good. Besides that, everything here else is the same. No real difference. So the big thing here is now, can we bind this to our drone? We're looking for this bar here to go up. So we're going to power up my drone. And sure enough, here it is right here. It shows that we do have telemetry so that's pretty cool and this time it should bind as well automatically telemetry recovered. there's our beeper and let's see if we can arm it all right guys so this thing is pretty awesome man i'm really impressed with the build quality and how this thing performs how well it received the updates is this something that you're interested in? I mean, one watt seems like a lot of power, but I would say that this thing here is now future proof. And this thing now supports the actual Express LRS configurator. So you can update it straight from the configurator with the regular and nightly build. So that's really good, guys. Now, if you're still unsure about what Express LRS is, or maybe you do know what it is, but you're kind of on the fence whether or not to switch all your drones to Express LRS, I've made a video specifically for you. I'll leave a link right here. Now, maybe you want to know how to install this Express LRS in your drones, or maybe you're curious about how this little module here performs. I've done a video for that as well, and I'll leave a link right here. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.